Jackie Leiden and her two sisters grew up in Menominee, Wisconsin, but their childhood was anything but ordinary. At a young age, their grandmother told them their mom was gone, staying in a, quote, nut house because her nerves were shot. Later, the girls learned their mom had a mental illness we now call bipolar disorder or manic depression. So what's it like to grow up with a mom who's struggling with delusions and mental illness? Jackie explains in her new book. It's called Daughter of the Queen of Sheba, and she joins us now to talk about it. We're so excited to have you. There's an event where people can meet you and your mom Absolutely. as well, right? Coming up yes. in July. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm really excited about this. This is for the Charles Kubley Foundation on July the 2nd. It's free and open to the public at 6 o'clock. Uh, doors, I think, open at 530 at the University Club on Well Street in downtown Milwaukee. I think it's fantastic, Jackie, that, that people have the opportunity to meet you and to see your mom as well. And we'll have details again in just a second about that great event. But let's talk about this a little bit. You are the oldest of three girls. Um, you grew up in a house. Your, your mom was married to your dad um, and then eventually remarried um, and you had a stepfather and, and it was after that that you sort of became aware, the whole family did, that, that your mom was, was ill. Well, I think, um, and just to, I, in the book, which I wrote actually, Molly, some years ago, but in paperback, it's yeah. been re-released continually. Uh, we actually grew up, and I didn't want to say, even when I was writing this book, partly for privacy's sake, that the real place we grew up is in Delafield, Wisconsin. Oh, it was? So right nearby. Okay. And our mother um, coped with a very severe family coped is not the right word. Our mother sort of fractured, actually, when she was in her early 30s. And When uh, was this picture taken of her? Oh, in this picture, that would be about the time that I was first aware that she was mentally ill. She's in her late 30s in this picture. And gorgeous. married. She's a gorgeous woman. She's both a former model and a former legal secretary here in Milwaukee. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have said that her illness is the bonfire my family all got warm around because she thought she was the Queen of Sheba. This was one of her early bipolar delusions. And she bequeathed to me Mesopotamia, and I grew up to become a Middle East correspondent for National Public Radio. And NPR. that's for real. That's not a delusion. You really work for NPR. I really do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> not a delusion. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty consuming, but you know how to thrust and parry and deal with the illness when you are a child. One of the things I'm going to talk about for the Kubli Foundation fundraiser in is the um, a child's perspective of what this is. And One what feels was a child's perspective? I mean, your mom was delusional. Very. There with with bipolar disorder, there are ups and downs. There are horrible mood swings sometimes. We mostly had the manic side of the cycle. My mother was Marie Antoinette. She was the CEO of, a, of her own foundation. She bought a race house horse. She bought sports a sports car. Uh, we had quite the wild ride. And so children feel very protective. And I used to say, Molly. Um, you can see from this picture we have come through the other side. Children feel very protective often of a delusional parent. Are, is it embarrassing? I uh, would say that I felt more sensitive than actually embarrassed, but I should stress that our mother was not cruel or necessarily abusive to us. I think in those kinds of situations that adds in another element. I was very aware that there was her and that she was ill. This is a picture, by the way, from a stage dramatic reading from my book, Daughter of the Queen of Sheba, which the actress Joan Allen, who many of your viewers will know, uh, she was in Nixon, I remember most recently, a TV movie, uh, an actress from Chicago. Joan played my mom. Uh, Lauren Ambrose, who was in Six Feet Under, played me. This book has attracted a lot of attention from people. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because I know that the book's been published in 11 languages. It was a national bestseller. Um, it's never gone out of print, which is incredible. It's been optioned for a film. And most recently, you got the um, attention of actress Glenn Close, right? And I think movies like Silver, um, the um, Silver Linings Playbook, for example, are helping to destigmatize mental illness and very important ways, and I think it's exciting that your book has received this kind of attention. Thank you, Molly. That means a lot to me. It really mm -hmm. does. I think that uh, what I say is that stigma is the other part of this that isolates people, that makes people, uh, young Charlie Kubli, hide the illness, uh, in his case, depression, and my mom's more the manic side of the cycle. They both take you away from your, you know, energetic, composed self. They are lifeless. 
lifelong and chronic conditions, but that doesn't mean they can't be coped with. And Glenn Close, I want to add, has been a big champion of this book and movie project because her sister and uh, nephew both cope with mental illness, and she has her own uh, foundation called Bring Change to Mind, which some people might have seen uh, ads for on television, directed by Ron Howard. I have so many questions for you. For example, do you, did you worry as a child or even it back Pass it that you would get a mental I know illness where you're going because with there's this. genetics. There's a component it, there. Genetics play a huge, huge, huge factor. I have worried about other genetic histories in my family, other sorts of <laughs> sensitivities, shall we say. I did think about that one um, without giving away the personal history of family members, you know, who aren't speaking today. Yes, it has a genetic component, and it's, and and we see it in our family. Because I won't personally. ask about your sisters. Well, actually, I've... they're great, and I'm happy for you to ask about oh, them. Oh, okay, okay. Because I I also think that mental illness shaped my family in a profound way. I mean, my middle sister today is our mother's caregiver. She does a fantastic job at that. My youngest sister, who started out as a corporate attorney, today does elder care law and a That's lot of wonderful. family mental health cases. What was your mom's reaction to you writing this book? She's still living. This wasn't <laughs> something that you wrote after her death. I mean, I, I can't imagine what, how, she, did she know she had a mental, Does she is she aware of it? For many decades, I would say that my mother uh, would think that her illness was situational and mm -hmm. that each time, and we've gone through many breakdowns, many, this wasn't just once, many manic spikes, and quite recently, uh, she thought that each time was going to be the last time. Insight is something I think many people struggle to achieve, particularly people who were so stigmatized as younger people. Um, she was aghast, uh, not when I mentioned the book, but when she realized it was actually going to happen. It's painful for mm -hmm. her to read, no question. But she has come around to, and I'm very fortunate in this, seeing what it's done for so many other people, which is why when I speak in places like Wisconsin, home, uh, I just spoke about her in Washington, D.C., for example. When I speak at home and can bring her with me, I'm really happy to be able That's to do that. so cool, Jackie. I'm going to give the information. We could go on and we discuss could. for hours. <laughs> well, you'll and come, I, would I love hope. The, You've been yeah. on the board of the Kubli Foundation. Yeah, and so. I, I, I love to support the Kubli. July 2nd. The Kubli <laughs> Foundation is a great organization to support. Join them for a discussion of the daughter of the Queen of Sheba with author Jackie Lydon. It's happening Tuesday, July 2nd from 5.30 until 7. The phone number to call because this is a free event sponsored by the Charles E. Kubley Foundation. It's a public charity that supports important mental health programs, but they would like you to RSVP for this free event. Call the number that you see there on your screen. I'm sure it's an evening that a lot of people will, it'll be very important and memorable. 414-962-0918. And I appreciate you sharing your both heartbreaking and inspiring story with us. Thank I'm you so much. So happy to be here. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thank you.